Alan, great to see you once again. Great to see you again, my friend. <laughs> I think that you and I have met many times over the years, yeah. but I'm pretty sure this is the first time that you and I met around the chess table. Exactly. <laughs> first time around the chess table and first time playing chess with you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, this chess table is actually made of sulfur concrete. And as you know, sulfur is the very topic that has a top of mind for our industry these days. What does IMO 2020 mean for the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore? As the leading bunkering port in the world, the MPA has been working very closely with all our stakeholders to prepare for the IMO 2020 regulations. So we have been working on two fronts. One, to instill confidence through ensuring fuel availability. And two, to prepare our port as well as the thousands of ships under the Singapore Registry of Ships. Exactly. So on fuel availability, we have been working very closely with all our licensed bunker suppliers, engaging them, talking to them, getting yeah. regular updates uh, to make sure that they are available, to make sure that they are able to supply, supply yeah. compliant fuels. Yeah. We have published an information sheet detailing the list of bunker suppliers and the range of compliant fuels that they can supply for 2020. I always think about the industry, the marine industry, as our industry. It's not the industry of the suppliers, it's not the industry of the ship owners, it's the industry of all stakeholders working together mm. and driving this industry forward. Working together with the industry is a very important element for us, which is why we have been working very closely with the Singapore Shipping Association for the SSA. Yeah. So together with the SSA, we have published two technical guidebooks on uh, complying with IMO 2020. So this guidebook will provide the details mm -hmm. and the options for compliance and also what to do when ships call at the port come 2020. So we believe that through this uh, close col collaboration, we can together uh, navigate 2020. Yeah, and that's important because I think that uh, one of the things I notice when I talk to customers or other stakeholders is the availability of information and, uh, and, and tangible information put together by experts. So, Luca, tell me, the IMO has announced the global sulfur regulations for some time. What has it meant for you? What is it meant for ExxonMobil? How's your preparations coming along? It starts with our long-term investment in our refineries. It then continues um, with um, the 0.50% sulfur compliant fuels that we have announced since April and October of last year. And then it's integrated and complemented by the new range of fuels and lubricants that uh, um, are an integral part of how we think about preparedness for IMO 2020. What about enforcement, Alan? Because that's the other question I get all the time, and so I'm sure that you get that all the time as well. Exactly, I've been getting lots of questions about enforcement. But Luca, you know, enforcement for MPA is not, nothing new. It's not new to us. It's very true. Singapore is a party to all the MAPO annexes, and we have been enforcing our regulations. So this is an additional enforcement point that we have to work into our regular enforcement regime. So we enforce MAPO regulations through our port state control and flex state control regime. So specifically for the IMO 2020 rule, ships will be selected for inspections based on our internal risk, risk assessment matrix. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we also take into account whether the vessel has declared a fauna that's yeah. another important yeah. point, Fauna, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of uh, the specifics as to how we enforce it, I think broadly there are three levels. Okay. First, we'll look at the documents, so a document, documents check. And if there's reason to inspect further, we'll do an on-site verification yeah. using portable uh, sulfur test kits. Ah. Uh, and if there's reason to suspect or to to investigate further and then we'll take a sample, a representative sample and send this sample to a accredited testing laboratory for detailed yeah. analysis. I think that this is a great example and again going back to how always our discussion, how do we give peace of mind to ship owners, how do we give peace of mind to, to the industry, this is another very concrete and, um, and tangible um, example. Yes. So, another compliance option, as you know, is fuel oil in conjunction with scrubbers. I think that the numbers which I hear from uh, a, a, 
number of sources. Maybe up to 3,000 ships fitted with scrubbers uh, by 2020. Um, but I've seen that uh, um, at the back end of last year, um, the MPA banned uh, open loop scrubbers. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Luca, let me clarify. We are not banning open loop scrubbers. In fact, okay. We are prohibiting the discharge of wash water from open loop scrubbers when ships call at the Port of Singapore. Big difference. Yes, there's a big difference there. So we have taken this decision after close consultation with various stakeholders, including other, other government agencies in Singapore, like the National Environment Agency, the yeah. National Parks Board. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a decision, a well-considered decision, taking into account the science behind the wash water discharge. As you know, Singapore is a small country geographically. We have also very limited port waters. So, and this port waters is shared by many users, including maritime, yeah. even aquaculture, and also yeah. recreation. Yeah. So we have to be vigilant and also safeguard the quality of waters of our coastal waters. Yeah, and the distinction is quite uh, important. Come 2020, we expect a change. So from July 2019 this year, we'll level the playing field and make sure that all our bunker tankers will supply all types of fuels through mass flow meters. But uh, looking a little ahead to the future, right. we are also preparing ourselves to be an LNG bunker ready port. That's another so, important dimension. <laughs> yeah, so as you heard, we've uh, uh, put in place various incentive schemes yeah. uh, to encourage the uptake of LNG bunkering in Singapore. And we are doing uh, quite okay. Uh, we have seen some good results so far. Yeah. Today we have two LNG uh, tugs operating regularly and operating well in our port. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. And, uh, but we believe that this uh, effort needs to take on an international dimension, which is why we have worked very closely with uh, 11 other like-minded ports through uh, LNG Bunkering Port Focus Group to collectively uh, share our expertise, exchange best practices, and to harmonize uh, bunkering procedures for LNG bunkering. So this will instill greater confidence to, for the uptake of LNG bunkering globally. What's your take of LNG as a compliant fuel option? Well, before I'll give you my take on LNG, let me take your night. <laughs> LNG is going to be an important part um, of the marine fuel mix. We see LNG being about 10% of the marine fuel mix by 2040, so about 35 million tonnes per annum. So it's, a, it's an important component of the marine fuel mix of the future, alongside distillate fuels and alongside residual fuels, ranging from 0.50% down to 0.10, and anything above 0.50, as we discussed before, to be used with the scrubbers. Is a fuel that enables um, significant elimination of SOX, reduction in NOx, reduction in particulate matter. So there are a number of advantages to that. Um, the logistics for LNG are fast developing. We've got more and more gas supply vessels. Like-minded people that understand that this is a new fuel, understand that it comes with a different way of thinking about that. This is a cryogenic fuel. As you, as you know. And uh, therefore, safety is an important parameter and the work that uh, um, we're doing together as part of SGMF, the Society for Gases Marine Fuel, is an important part for that. So we believe that LNG is going to be a tangible part of the marine fuel mix in the future. And uh, there are a number of activities that uh, we are currently um, considering, specifically for LNG for marine application. Great. And it looks like it's my turn. It looks like your move. To take your horse. Oh, ah, to take my knight. Okay, I'll better get myself covered then. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that there is a bit of a shift in sentiment in the marine industry. What do you mean by the shift in sentiment in the, in the industry? IMO 2020 is not just about any compliant fuel. It's about the right compliant fuel. We talk about 0.50% sulfur compliant fuel, for example. And I think that at the end of the day, it's not just about compliant with sulfur. Compliant with sulfur is the ticket to the game, is the minimum threshold that you have to meet. After that, I think that there are a number of other properties 
in the fuels that are really important. We've done a significant amount of additional testing, starting with a PCN, estimated CTN number, for all the fuels that we have announced, as well as FIA testing, fuel ignition analysis really important because that we can measure how a fuel really burns. So we've done all of this additional due diligence for all our fuels to demonstrate to our customer, you were talking before about peace of mind. Yeah, that's what we've done. And I welcome the opportunity for everyone that provides fuel, any supplier of fuel, to do exactly the same due diligence because this is what customers think and what customers believe is a right fuel. So Luca, ExoMobil is ready? The MPA is ready. Yeah. What do you think about the rest of the industry? The rest of the industry is getting ready. Uh, a number of companies have got a lot of very detailed advanced plan. They start putting them in place. Um, if you think about also what IMO has done with the ship implementation plan that has helped that. We have tried to do our part. There are going to be people that are going to be they are ready now, the people there may be a bit lagging behind, but I know that the MPA is doing their part. So we're doing as much as we can to make sure that not only we are ready, not only you are ready, but the whole industry is ready. This is a joint responsibility. It's always really good to talk to you yeah. and uh, you know really appreciated this at professional level the majority of the games uh, of chess actually finish in a draw so um, I'm not a professional player you're not a professional player but yeah, um, yeah we end up like professionals with a draw yeah it looks like a draw and maybe we should have a rematch I think I'll take you on <laughs> on that one <laughs>